Hi, this is Scott Kilo, Sierra 6, Delta Alpha Yankee, and for today's video, uh, we're back with another in the Operator Series for the Ocean KG935 Golf, and for today's video, we're going to be talking about scan groups and understanding basically how they work and how they're going to affect your decision-making process moving forward in terms of how you, uh, or rather what memory slots you assign to frequencies that you're going to program into your radio. Now, the first thing I'll tell you right up front is... Um, if you're going to be just using the simplex channels that came programmed into the radio and you're going to be adding a couple of repeaters, you're not really going to be plugging a lot into this radio beyond that. In other words, you're going to be using less than 100 channels. You can ignore this moving forward. And just set your radio up to, to scan um, in terms of... Uh, what you want done in area A and area B, you can set that up just to scan all frequencies and you are good to go. But for a lot of folks, because this has 999 memory slots in it, um, with that kind of capacity, people are going to be tempted to plug a lot of stuff in. And I encourage you to do that, particularly if you're going to be using this radio for any kind of emergency communications. Being able to plug in things like Law Enforcement Frequencies, Office of Emergency Services, Fire, Ambulance, uh, uh, City Services, and whatnot. Very important stuff to have in your radio in terms of intelligence gathering. Uh, in, in an emergency or a disaster, being able to determine where road closures are, where hot spots are, where problem areas are, is it's a critical, it's a critical uh, thing to, to have that you're going to want to know. It's a capability you're going to want to have. So if you have that ability within your radio, it behooves you to, to set your radio up to do that stuff. So what you're going to end up with with a radio with 999 memory channels is you, like me, might end up with as many as 775 memory slots programmed. And if you've got that many memories programmed into your radio and they're all set up to be, to be scanned, uh, if you hit scan all on that, it's going to take a good long time to work through all of those memory slots. You're going to be sitting there for a bit uh, to get back to the, the stuff that you want to listen to. And in a lot of cases, that stuff's not even going to be relevant. Uh, and I'll give you an idea of what I'm talking about in terms of how I have my channels laid out here. Like I've, I've got about 80, I think it's 81 GMRS um, relevant frequencies uh, programmed into the radio, and that includes simplex channels, simplex channels with PL tones applied, and repeaters. Uh, and like I said, 81 of those channels, and I've got those in one little area, and that's what I use the most, followed by, you know, another 75, 76 or so frequencies for local law enforcement within my immediate area. And that's my next priority thing that I would scan. I also have amateur radio frequencies in here so that I have simplex repeaters and whatnot so that I can monitor amateur radio too. And then I have law enforcement agencies that are outside of my area. So as I travel with this radio, either to the counties north of me, south of me, or west of me, I have the relevant law enforcement details in there as well. So like I say, I've got stuff that's out of my area that I wouldn't necessarily want to scan. So having some kind of a system to break the memories in the radio down into smaller usable chunks is a good thing. Now, unfortunately, the system that Ocean has elected to go with is a bit more primitive and unsophisticated when you compare it to other radio brands like Yaesu and Icom. Now there, you're going to be looking at uh, systems that are, uh, in this case, Ocean uses the term scan groups. They use terms like banks, or they also use terms like zones um, to break those into smaller chunks as well. And, and they might have 10 banks, or they might have 24 banks. Uh, depends on the radio. And also, they have the ability that regardless of where the... the so whatever memory channel you want to add to a bank, wherever that is within the scheme, it could be on slot 25 or slot 235. You can take that and assign it to any one of those 1 to 24 banks. doesn't matter where it's at within the radio. So you can just program whatever the hell you want into the radio and then set up your banks and use that to kind of make everything nice and pretty and, and nice and organized. But like I said, Ocean, their system is a, a bit more primitive, so you sort of have to plan ahead, and that's the reason I'm covering this now. Because the way their system works out is, as I mentioned, they're called scan groups. And rather than having the ability to pull any channel from any line and assign it to any one of the banks, 
you're only able to utilize these in terms of the groups of channels or the groups of memory slots. So for instance, scan group one is channels one through 99. If you want something to be in scan group one, it has to be located within the memory. It has to be located somewhere between channels one and channels 99. You can't have something, you can't have a channel from uh, you can't have channel 525 assigned to scan group one. It just is not done. If you want that channel to be in scan group one, it has to be somewhere in channels one through channel 99. I hope that makes sense to you. Then moving on, scan group two is channel 100 to 199 and so on and so forth, all the way up to scan group 10, which is 900 to 999. Now, the way I have mine laid out, is I have all of my relevant GMRS stuff, which is 81 total channels, uh, and they are located from channel one to channel 81, and that is scan group one. That's the scan group I use most often. Beyond that, I have local law enforcement located channel 100 to 199. 200 to 299 is fire and OES, statewide stuff, real disaster preparedness kind of stuff, so that's all channel 200 to 299. 300 to 399 scan group four is uh, law enforcement and emergency services in the counties north of me. Um, 400 to 499 is law enforcement and emergency services in the county south of my county. Then 500 to 599 is west. I tend to go out to the, the coast a lot. Um, so I have all the relevant law enforcement emergency services stuff out there. 600 to 699 is marine. I like to monitor marine traffic and, and listen in on that, hear the boats and whatnot talking. Now 700 to 899, I have nothing that's wide open. Uh, I don't have anything allocated in there and really I can't think of much more I would wanna put on the radio to be honest with you. Uh, and then 900 to 999 is ham. Uh, amateur radio service stuff. So that's sort of how I have them broke, broken up. And as I put them into the radio, that's exactly how it occurred. Now, if you're, fortunately, this radio is supported by Chirp so that um, if you did need to move some stuff around, it's fairly easy to do so. If you've already made the mistake of kind of mixing this stuff up, you can fix it pretty easily in Chirp because it, it does support copy and paste. The factory CPS, though, uh, and scan groups affect other radios beyond this. For instance, the uh, I'm dealing with the uh, KGQ10 Hotel, uh, and that one is not supported by Chirp. I mean, it kind of is, but it, you got to do weird stuff with it. Uh, that's factory CPS, which does not support copy and paste worth a darn. So um, that's a bit of a problem. So as I said, you're going to want to have some kind of a scheme before you make a whole lot of moves here. Uh, now, let's talk about how to set these scan groups up within the radio itself and how to do that on the fly and make it sort of... Um, it's actually super duper easy. And in some cases, it's easier to move from scan groups than it is with some of the bank setups with the AC radio. Some of those get a little complicated moving from one bank to the next. But let's talk about uh, how the menu system affects that. So when you, uh, and, and now next, oh, before I get to that, let me talk about why do we call it scan group A and scan group B? Well, if you were go all the way back to the very first video that I that I did in the operator series, I told you area A and area B are kind of important moving forward. You need to know what that is. So uh, as a refresher, area A is this area at the top of the radio. Right now it's highlighted with the, uh, the red main icon. So that's the active area right at the moment. But of course, if we press ban, we go down to area B and now that's active. So the same thing applies in terms of scan. You set up what you want scanned for area A and what you want scanned for area B. So let's go to menu here, and we're going to be looking at selection number 64. So for scan group A, let's look at the selections that we have there, and it's going to de define what gets scanned when I press the scan button when area A is active. So scan group A, I press menu, and let me show you the options. So option one is all. If you select all, what's going to happen is when you press the scan button, it's going to scan every channel in the radio that's been added to scan. So from 100 to 999, if you've, if you've selected add to scan, it's going to scan it. Now that's the system I told you is not particularly... Um, Terrific, but going back to what I said at the very beginning, if you're a person who's just going to run GMRS channels on here and you're not interested in a bunch of other stuff, all is all you need. 
if, if you've got less than 100 channels programmed into this radio, again, selecting all is all you're going to need. Just select that and you're good to go. So if I do that, when I press scan, what's going to happen is it's going to scan through. And if I let it sit here long enough, it's okay, we're already getting into law enforcement frequencies now. But it's going to scan from where you started all the way through to the end and all the way back to channel one and through to 999 again. So it'll just keep going just like that. So let's get out of that. Let's go back here. And in this case, though, let's go... Let's press that again. Let's go to G1. Now, G1, that's scan group one, as I showed you on the printout earlier. That's going to be channels one through channel 99. So I'm going to select that and exit. So I'm on channel 161 right now. Area A is active. If I press scan, what's going to happen is this should go all the way back to channel one, start scanning, and run all the way through everything that's available for scan from channel one to channel 99. There we go. We started at 1, and we're going to go all the way up, and it should flip at 81. Oh, I'm sorry, 82. And then it goes back again, and it'll just cycle through that. So let's go ahead and kill that. Now, area B, um, let's go ahead and select what we want done there. So for area B, um, I usually, what I have for that is group 2, because as I mentioned, I, I'm mainly listening to local GMRS and local law enforcement. But in this case, let's do something creative. Let's go all the way up to, let's go to uh, group 10. So let's select group 10 and exit out. So now, again, if I hit scan, I'm going to deliberately make a mistake here now. So if I hit scan, well, I didn't, I'm not in group 10. Well, that's because I'm in area A. I need to go down to area B. Now I'm in area B, I'm on channel 101. When I hit scan, it should start at channel 900. And it does, starts at channel 900. So now it's gonna scan everything in group 10, which is 900 to 999. And here we're, we're listening to local amateur radio so that I can monitor them. And it's always a good idea to have amateur radio frequencies in here because I did a, another video where I talked about how you can do sort of a cross-service communication plan so that a GMRS op, GMR, bleh, sorry about that, a GMRS operator can talk to an amateur radio operator and vice versa by basically transmitting in the blind. Um, so if he's monitoring GMRS and I'm, or, uh, and I'm transmitting on GMRS and he's transmitting on ham and I'm monitoring the ham simplex channel that he's um, uh, currently operating on. I'll hear him here and talk to him there and then he's going to hear me there and talk to me there. So it's, it, I do a whole video on it. It's a pretty simple process, but it's something that you want to be able to do. Of course, you do have to coordinate it with people, but it's a capability. Suffice it to say, though, amateur radio is another area where you can gather intel on local conditions, so good to have. Enough on that. So let's go ahead and exit out of that real quick. So that's kind of, in a nutshell, how it works. So you can sort of see, like I said, how you, you're going to want to have strategy moving forward. So as I get into talking about um, programming in frequencies as memory slots, like I said, you're going to want to already have an idea of where you're going to want to set this up. And this little printout is a good way of doing this because you can just go into this printout here. And in this case, for instance, uh, for one, I can, I can put in GMRS local. Then I have local LE etc. And you can go down and you can make your, your, your little list here and you can fill in all of the different slots that you have and maybe cut that out, fold it up, put it in your wallet or something so that you have it for reference later until you get to memorizing this. But again, not as sophisticated, um, not as versatile as some of the other radio companies, but it's a system nonetheless. And it may not be the system we want, but it's a system we have, so we need to know how to, how to use it. So that, my friends, is scan groups in a nutshell. Um, so moving forward, I'm going to talk, um, uh, I think I've got one or two more things to talk about real quick on scan, and then we're going to move on to the nuts and bolts of how to actually program different uh, different frequencies in here. Uh, we're going to talk about how to do simplex, simplex with PL tone, uh, and then we're going to talk about plugging in repeaters and other frequencies for monitoring purposes. Uh, but like I said, I wanted to make sure this was out of the way before we talked about that, because that's a decision that you're going to have to make. And I wanted to, wanted you to know why I would be doing that moving forward. So 
I will thank you for watching and or listening. This is Scott, Kilo CR6, Delta Alpha Yankee from Vice City, California. Have a wonderful day.